back. Stop. Play it again. Rewind. One more time, please. Um, I'm clawing the air for the purchase of reality, but I'll never get a grip. Non sum qualis erum. But who is? I keep replaying the scene of me at a beach in Encinitas in my head. It was the end of April. I think life still made sense back then. At least it wasn't make-believe. Or maybe it was the sun and waves and the tanned, healthy bodies that had yet to succumb to aging, gravity, too many weighty thoughts about the human condition, chess openings. Why have I still not learned to play a musical instrument? Everything gets more complicated. The more I've simplified my life, the more complicated it's become. There is no winning, and raising the white flag makes it even worse. I try my best to muster up some courage. I had some courage back then, at the beach. I walked into the cold Pacific, wading up to my waist, and then I dove into a wave. I swam underwater, and the waves rolled over me. I went back to the shirtless and barefoot man, picking a beat-up ukulele and belting out Ave Maria in an East Texas accent. Maria, gratia plena, ave, ave, dominus. Dominus? Uh. <laughs> I couldn't say how many gallons his cowboy hat could hold, but that didn't matter because the hat was only a prop in the ceremony. The singing cowboy stood in the middle of the room, beseeching Mary to pray and intercede with the big guy for us sinners as blood slowly made its way to the drain near the cowboy's naked feet. The dead man's body was prostrate in reverence for the prayer. The waves rolled over and I went deeper. I couldn't get it out of my mind. Snow white hair and beard, the beard spilling over the half Windsor knot of what I knew was an Hermes tie. I had given him the azure tie with the geometric print the year before. And Stanley looked right at me as he buried the knife in the man's chest. A quick upward thrust, his eyes locked with mine. His eyes were two windows, and he looked at me as a neutral observer from the other side of those blue panes. I looked away, down at my shoes glued to the white tile floor. I wanted to run and get out of there, but I couldn't move, could hardly breathe. I took a deep breath as I broke the surface. My eyes were closed, but I knew the sun was blinding. The smell and taste of the ocean, the sound of the waves, the up and down. I started to float on my back, but kept my eyes closed. I want that moment to have meaning beyond me, bobbing in the Pacific. I try to fool myself into believing that when I open my eyes, I said goodbye to the dream in which I had been wandering for seemingly my entire life, that I had given up on being me. And that was at the beginning of spring last year. I fled Frankfurt shortly after witnessing the murder, feeling like a fugitive. I left lockdown gray Germany for sunny, nearly fully opened California. Cali was the perfect place to leave it all behind, to let go. I knew it wouldn't be easy. The flu, or what used to be known as the flu, and the murder at the arms deal gone wrong 
Stanley was selling man pads and automatic weapons to Ukraine almost a year before Russia invaded, had pushed me to the edge. I had to keep my balance and not fall off. I jumped, or you could say I was shoved, and still haven't landed. The free fall gives you the power of Superman, or a lesser Roman god, even if you're in a small room in a nowhere town with a typewriter and a Bill Evans record spinning on the turntable. Life is perfect, because life is what it is. And a grand charade is what it is. I got shoved because I finally got it a few days after being at the beach. After three nights of nocturnal hyperhidrosis from COVID night sweats, when I woke up on the fourth day, the world was in technicolor. It was and is almost a cartoon. Had I given up the ghost? I do know I gave up on the news and social media, quit my job, and got rid of nearly everything I owned. I was reborn into this make-believe world, into the fiction. If you're searching for meaning, you'll never find it. Whoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. We're all stuck between something and nothing, and that something is nothing too. That's why I'm sitting here pounding the machine with two fingers while Mr. Evans' fingers glide over the keys. Now, you may be asking yourself where this is going. Is it leading somewhere? To answer that, I, I want to say yes, but what I want to relate is, frankly, so fantastical that you will probably, probably not believe a word of it. And the more I edit it, uh, the worse it all becomes. I can't get it straight. I can't make sense of it. Like when I try to edit myself in society. It's not exactly a love story, though I was in love. I'd say it is more of an adventure story. And yes, uh, there was a car chase, uh, some fisticuffs, an armed robbery, and a trip in low Earth orbit. We scorched everything. And as for that wildfire that filled the Central Valley with smoke and dusted everyone's patio furniture with ash... I'm confident the state would point its twisted finger at us, but I'd argue negligence on the part of the Forest Service. Between you and me, I'll apologize to Smokey Bear. Sorry, Smokey. I'd recommend fastening your seatbelt before we get started. What lies ahead is a bumpy ride that will have you bouncing in your seat, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> or squirming because of the feather tickling your ass. Until next time. Oh, and I'm going to sign off with a little time traveling back to the San Francisco Giants and LA Dodgers way back when, in the late 70s. Uh, and, uh, Jack Clark. I, I thought of him and uh, found an old game uh, being announced. I thought some of you out there would enjoy it. It's a great uh, little trip back uh, to a world uh, that is no longer. Take care. Now, here comes the trouble, Jack Clark, who is second to George Forster in RBIs. He's third in the league in doubles, and he just brings up all kinds of impressive credentials, along with a 300 batting average. Clark with 19 home runs, 81 runs batted in. First and third, nobody out first inning. 
Clark, right-hand hitter waiting. Hooten out of his stretch, infield is back, and the fastball is high, ball one. We have not seen the great curveball that Hooten had at Candlestick. He said after that game it was the best curve he had in his life, and it sure looked it. One and oh, the count to Clark. Now the 1 0 pitch on the way to Jack, and that's inside, ball two. Clark at one time thought he was going to make the big leagues as a pitcher. Then he was convinced he'd be the third baseman for the Giants until they got Kenny Reitz. So finally, he set his sights in the outfield, and in a year and a half, he's an all star. 2 0 to Jack. Matlock down the line from third, Dwyer away from first. The 2 0 pitch to Clark, breaking ball for a strike. 2 and 1. The Dodgers have done well against the Giants and against the league here at home. They've won 9 of 13 from San Francisco here and a dozen out of 14 against the league. The 2 1 pitch to Jack Clark. Hooten delivers, swung on and missed. Fastball inside about at the knees. 2 and 2. On deck, Willie McCovey. Nobody out first inning. Giants at first and third. Hooten out of his stretch, checks the runners. And the 2-2 pitch is whacked foul off the facade of the second deck, going to the box seats in the lower deck. 2-2 two and two to Jack Clark. Clark is from Azusa, Gladstone High, great all-around athlete there. But even the Giants are surprised at how quickly he has reached all-star status, and he certainly deserves it. He's got all kinds of ability. A little terrifying to realize he's just starting out. Terrifying if you're an opposing pitcher. 2-2 pitch to Jack Clark. Is in the dirt. Goes behind Oates. And down to second base goes Dwyer. So Gianni Oates trying to block a wild pitch. Succeeded in blocking it, but that's all. Now 3-2 and two with first base open. Nobody out. And Willie McCovey waiting his turn. So a rather wobbly start by Bert Hooten. So Vida Blue came in here with all kinds of great pass performances, and he was shelled. And now here comes Hooten, winner of five straight, five of his last six, and he's in trouble. Clark waiting. Burt now will go out of a windup, and the 3-2 pitch is fouled away. Tomorrow night, Tommy John will go after his 14th. He's 13-8. and eight. Rob Nepper is 11-9. and nine. And then Sunday, Don Sutton, 12 and 9 against John Montefusco, 9 and 4. Bird staring into Johnny Oates, and Clark, tired of waiting, backs out. He ended three innings in San Diego, no score. Putin looks at Madlock into the windup, 3 2 pitch is low, and that loads him up. Nobody out, and Willie McCovey coming up. You could take an hour to talk about Willie McCovey and home runs against the Dodgers. He has hit 504 in his great career. He has hit 45 home runs against the Dodgers, and 17 of those home runs right here at Dodger Stadium. And although he is hitting only 100 against the Dodgers this year, he still has eight runs batted in. The so Hooten is in trouble, and the pitch to McCovey is swung on and missed. He tried to golf a low pitch, 0-1. McCovey, at 40 years old, has three hits and 30 at-bats, but as we said, eight RBIs. He has more RBIs than any other giant against the Dodgers. The next one is fouled back. So Hooten has him in a jam, 0 oh and 2. Jack Clark at first, Jim Dwyer at second, Bill Madlock at third. Down in the Dodger bullpen, Lance Rotson begins to warm up. The strike two pitch to McCovey is popped in the air, and I mean up into the soup. Russell looking up into that gray sky. The infield fly rule is called, and he has it. One away. So McCovey pops it up, and now another terror coming up, Darrell Evans. 
Evans is hitting 258 against the league. Almost 100 points higher than that against the Dodgers. In the last two years, he's hit 364 against the Dodgers. And he has 24 lifetime home runs. Darrell gets up to the plate and now turns and goes to the on-deck circle. So time out. Evans, despite that 258 mark, is right up there with the leaders in walks. 78 of them. That would be more than any other Giant. And it would also be more than any other Dodgers. And he is right there in the leaders with runs scored at 64. So Darrell, a very valuable member of the Giant Ball Club. Putin delivers. Fastball fouled away. 0-1. Putin has faced the Giants three times this year and won them all, and in each game, he's allowed one run. One of the three games, he went the distance. The other two, he got into the seventh with two out and had to come out. Strike one pitch to Darrell Evans. Pop foul off third. No play per se. He's coming over, but it's back in five rows. 0 oh and 2. So with the bases loaded and nobody out, Willie McCovey popped up. Now the count 0-2 on Darrell Evans. And another talented left-hand batter, Terry Whitfield, on deck. One away. Bird, a long look at Johnny Oates. Now into the windup and the strike two pitch to Darrell Evans. Low, he threw that knuckle curb. Almost in the dirt. A good save by Johnny Oates. One and two. Rungi, Olsen, Dale, and McSherry, the umpires. Putin trying to get out of a mess here in the first inning. One and two to Darrell Evans. Bird ready, delivers, and it's outside. Ball two. Madlock at third. Dwyer at second. Clark at first. One away. Johnny Oates wigwagging a couple of signs out. Burt takes a long look. Madlock bluffing down the line. The 2-2 pitch to Darrell Evans. High. And so he's gone as far as he can go. A full count. Bases loaded. One out. What a way to start the night. As we told you, Darrell Evans leading the Giants in walk, so he has a good eye. Three and two. Putin ready, and the pitch to Evans is swung on and fouled away out of play. Putin got the ball down around the knees inside part of the plate. So it's still three and two. Burt with a new ball to work with. Darrell Evans waiting. Putin to the windup, and the 3-2 pitch on the way is driven to deep right field. Back goes Reggie Smith on the track, and he will catch it at the wall. Madlock scores, Dwyer to third. One to nothing, Giants. Boy, Evans sure gave it a ride. He came within a couple.